you for that speech. We now turn to the second speaker for the proposition, Dr. Phyllis Sagano. Phyllis Sagano is a senior research associate in residence and adjunct professor of religion at Hofstra University. She's written several books in religious studies, particularly about women in the Catholic Church. She previously won the Catholic Press Association and College Theology Society Annual Book Awards. She was previously appointed to the Papal Commission for the Study of Women and the Diaconate. You have the ears of the house. Thank you. You know, I'm delighted to uh, explore this topic, muddy as it is, this evening. When, when I was invited to this event, I asked for a definition of religion and feminism. With none forthcoming, then or now, I must present my own definitions in order to clarify how I agree with the proposition as proposed. The House says feminism is incompatible with religion. So, let me start with religion. I'm not willing to present outlooks of, uh, of religions other than my own. I am a Roman Catholic. So the perspective of my remarks is that of Catholicism, the religion of some 1.4 billion people, or nearly 18% of the world's population. And the number of Catholics is growing worldwide, except in Europe. <laughs> Of course, there are significant numbers of other Christians, especially here in the United Kingdom, but my perspective is specifically Catholic and Roman Catholic at that. And then we have feminism, a more slippery term there is not. The dictionary will say that feminism is the belief in and advocacy of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes expressed especially through organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. Some say feminism is a movement put to put an end to sexism, sexist exploitation and oppression, and to achieve full gender equality in law and in practice. Those broad statements bring with them both actions and beliefs that religion, including Catholicism, applauds, and, and some that religion, specifically Catholicism, will accept. Now, while religion can be specified, feminism cannot. Religion can be objectively determined to be a specific set of beliefs and practices of a specific group of people. Feminism, on the other hand, has a range of meanings from those acceptable to Catholicism to those outside the pale. Therein lies the conundrum. You see, the Roman Catholic Church has been and remains in the complete control of men. True, it has made and continues to make appointments of women to management positions, especially since Pope Francis redesigned the Curia, his, his central staff, and decreed that positions within it are both gender neutral and open to laypersons as well as clerics. Now, for the most part, the women appointed to curial positions are members of religious orders and institutes. As such, they can afford, or it's assumed they can afford, to survive on stipendary remuneration with the assumption that they live in the communities and convents owned by their religious orders. Few of the managerial appointments are to secular women, married or unmarried, who bring with them a different set of personal circumstances. To begin with, religious sisters, as well as priests and religious brothers, can be removed from their positions by their superiors. Many, in fact, are told their positions have five-year terms, and the agreement is they will not be removed. But Italian law, which governs Vatican personal personnel policy, protects an individual's job for life. Once the Vatican hires a secular woman, unless it manages to eliminate her job or otherwise skirt the law, she has a job for life. Hence, most of the appointments of women to Vatican managerial positions are to women religious. But as you go further and further down the Vatican's wire diagram, you will find that women appointed to seemingly important and powerful positions are volunteers and therefore not salaried. Such is the case with the secretary of the Pontifical Biblical Commission. Such was the case with the initial Pontifical Commission for the study of the diaconate of women to which I belonged. Such was the case and now again is the case with the recently recalled Second Pontifical Commission. So are these appointments equal? 
You see, a priest appointed to these positions still has his diocesan salary. Catholic women, as you know, cannot be ordained as priests. In any event, whether women religious or secular women, the key point is that women are appointed to managerial positions and not to ministerial positions. That is where the discussion approaches one of anti-feminism on the part of the Catholic Church. If we agree that persons can fulfill any ministerial task or duty, regardless of gender, why not women deacons, priests, and bishops? Why not? My academic work does not approach the question of women priests or bishops, but it is centered on the well-documented tradition of women ordained to the diaconate. So I cannot speak to the question beyond that. Having said that, I must point out that women are legislated out of genuine governance in the Catholic Church simply because they cannot be sacramentally ordained. Canon 129 of the Code of Canon Law states that clerics, that is, a person who is ordained, Clerics are qualified by virtue of that ordination by the church for governance and jurisdiction. The canon also states that laypersons, all women are laypersons, may cooperate with but not share governance and jurisdiction. In fact, despite the redesign of the Roman Curia, there are positions that appear to require ordination. And for the most part, the heads of the dicasteries, the major offices in the Curia, are cardinals and therefore bishops. So, if we are to define feminism simply as the equality of the sexes, it seems obvious that religion, that is the Catholic Church, is incompatible with feminism. And there are other issues <clears throat> that divide Catholicism from feminism. Abortion, obviously IVF, LGBTQ issues, insofar as they are presented as rock bottom requirements of feminism. However, just because the Catholic Church is incompatible with ideological feminism, with the issues clearly and obviously at odds with church teachings, it does not mean the Catholic Church is incompatible with equality, at least in its teachings. Why? Well, <coughs> Vatican documents recognize that persons who suffer the most from repeated and often combined scourges of war, drought, famine, and disease, and who are targets of unequal treatment by various political systems, are women. Many popes have spoken to the plight of women in the context of Catholic social teaching, although papal... Well, in <clears throat> yes? Um, given the Catholic Church teaches that Muslims are essentially evil and that women can't take control of their reproductive cycles, how on earth is that compatible with all of this sort of action that you're saying? Surely that perpetuates it. I didn't hear a word you said, so let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> Before that... Pope Leo XIII's Rerum Novarum set the tone for Catholic social teaching. Many documents since then, including those of the Second Vatican Council, reaffirmed the equal dignity of all persons. More than 40 years ago, Pope John Paul II complained about attacks on the dignity of women. Now, so far, so good. Pope Benedict XVI and Pope Francis repeated the theme. Women are to be respected and discrimination in education and employment is decried. The official church argument for equality has been repeated over the years. The dignity of the human person is bedrock belief of Catholic social teaching. That notion supports many of the concepts that feminism supports, equal pay, equal legal rights, equal access to education, equal access to fiduciary responsibility. Yet that same notion collides with the calls of feminism for access to abortion and other procedures that destroy embryonic life. In the case of Roman Catholicism, if feminism is defined as ideological secular feminism that contradicts church teachings, the propositions of the house is to be accepted. Feminism is incompatible with religion. Thank you.